News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A shooting death has been ruled a homicide. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It is Tuesday, July 28th, 2015. Sky's cloudy. We have 49 degrees in Missoula. And our newscast this morning, sponsored by Cootie Creek Village, the maintenance free active adult community in Stevensville for the best of Western Montana living. Missoula police are working with detectives from Spokane, Washington, after a man was found shot to death at a vehicle outside St. Patrick Hospital on Sunday afternoon. Detective Sergeant Scott Pastion has details. Looking into the possibility that uh, the death occurred in Spokane, and Spokane detectives are here in Missoula right now, and we're conducting a collaborative investigation to try and determine how he died. Pastor said authorities are investigating the shooting death as a homicide now. The shooting victim has been identified, but officials have not yet released his name. Fire crews were taking advantage of cooler wet weather in battling the Reynolds Creek Fire in Glacier Park. The fire has burned about five square miles of timber, brush and grass and rugged terrain on the north shore of St. Mary Lake since it started July 21st. One hotshot team planned to work Yesterday, building fire line above going to the Sun Road, while another planned to extinguish hot spots the head of the fire. Crews have completed fire line around the east end of the fire, which is now 30% contained. Fire officials say when the sun comes out between rain showers, hot spots revive and fire spreads across the forest floor. The St. Mary Visitors Center at the east edge of east entrance rather to the park reopened yesterday, but an 18-mile stretch of going to the Sun Road is still closed. Rain is helping to battle fires all over Montana. It's not only putting the brakes on Reynolds Creek Fire and Glacier Park, it's also very close to killing off the Cabin Gulch Fire, as Public Information Officer Mariah Lucian reported yesterday. Mother Nature has been helping with that quite a bit. We're receiving a good amount of rain. It started raining last night about um, midnight uh, and been throughout this morning been raining off and on. Pretty pretty much have containment around most of the area, the fire perimeter, and um, expect that to be likely contained by the end of shift today. Lucian says just a few crew members are out patrolling the 1,600-acre burned patch. What's left is kind of really the stumps and any interior smokes that might be holding. With the rain and amounts that we're getting, there, the likelihood's probably pretty low, but um, still just doing the diligence there, ensuring that all the embers are completely out. Although investigators still aren't reporting a cause for the Cabin Gulch fire, Broadwater County Attorney Cora Swanson filed felony arson charges against Robert Norman for the fire last week. Law enforcement authorities say a 70-year-old Montana man died in a rollover crash yesterday in northwest North Dakota. The North Dakota Highway Patrol said the man from Great Falls was driving a semi which rolled about 9.42 a.m., about 10 miles northwest of Ray. The highway patrols that the man was partially ejected from the vehicle as it rolled. He died from injuries sustained. In the crash, he was not identified. 52-year-old Joel Golder appeared in Missoula Justice Court yesterday after uh, uh, yesterday afternoon, rather charged with felony assault with a weapon, a misdemeanor partner or family member assault, after allegedly beating his girlfriend and threatening her with a handgun. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Mac Bloom asked Judge Marie Anderson for $50,000 bail. In this case, the state's asking for $50,000 in bail. It's alleged that the defendant pointed a handgun at Jane Doe and then moved it to the side and discharged it inches from her ear. It looks like he also struck her several times. So given the the serious nature of this offense, we are requesting a high bail. Golder asked Judge Anderson for a lower bail so he could continue to run his business, Full House Furniture. Anderson set bail at $25,000. His next court appearance is August 11th. Manufacturing is on the rise in Montana. According to a new study by the Bureau of Business and Economic Research, it's rising faster here than the national average. The growth rate of Montana manufacturing is now 8.6 percent. The national rate, 3.6 percent. Montana Manufacturing Extension Director Patty Fleming said the growth is most notable in certain parts of Montana. Pretty much uh, all of western Montana is very fertile. Uh, Billings and Lewistown also are. Much of it's in newer entities, and uh, it's not the manufacturing we used to think of with large smokestacks and large buildings. Many of these are, you know, wineries, breweries, distilleries, small outfits that don't take up a big footprint. Transportation has long been a problem for manufacturing in Montana. It still is. But Fleming says the companies that are successful are working around it. Shipping is always a major concern for all the manufacturers in Montana. I think the ones that are more successful 
uh, are the ones that uh, either are producing a very high dollar item where shipping as a percentage of the value of the item is not as big of an issue, or those that are selling uh, much of their product in Montana. Yeah, Montana says, we'll drink to that. The study found that the manufacture of alcoholic beverages was enjoying a meteoric rise in Montana, which now has 73 companies either brewing or distilling. Nearly three-quarters of all Montana manufacturing companies are small, with less than 10 employees. A judge has scheduled an October 19th trial date on a Holt County lawsuit in Nebraska aimed at keeping Trans-Canada Corporation from seizing land to build the Keystone XL oil pipeline. District Judge Mark Koziak set the date during a hearing yesterday in the town of O'Neill. Pipeline proponents want to overturn a state law that allowed then-Governor Dave Heineman to approve the pipeline's route through the state in 2013. Three sets of fraternal twins were born on the same day at a Bozeman hospital, adding up to more than half of the hospital's births that day. The Bozeman Daily Chronicle newspaper reports the first of the trio of twins was born at Bozeman Deaconess Hospital at 7.49 a.m. on July 22nd. The other two sets followed over the next seven hours, making it the first time in a decade the hospital has seen so many twins born in one day. Including the three twins, 11 babies were born at the hospital that day. Well, the National Weather Service is reporting snow above 8,000 feet in the Bitterroot Mountains. Yes, it is July 28th, but a cold, moist front passed through western Montana all day yesterday. Meteorologist Jeff Kitzmiller said the front is unusually cold for this time of year. It's a, really a cold low that we have moving into the region, and because of that, right around some of our highest peaks, it, it's cold enough that we're actually seeing snowfall. The main report that we have is Saddle Mountain. It's over in the Bitterroot Range. Kitzmiller said there won't be much accumulation with this system except up in the higher elevation. You know, right now we don't have any reports on the accumulation. It just seems like it's falling, but we are expecting maybe over some of the higher stuff. You know, if you're at Trapper Peak up at 10,000, I would expect actual accumulation there. Kitzmiller said the cool, moist system will be heading eastward by this afternoon with temperatures returning to the 80s and 90s by the middle of the week. News Talk time is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Low clouds and patchy fog possible early today. By the afternoon, mostly sunny skies. Comfortable with their highs in the mid-70s. Mid-40s tonight, 80s on Wednesday. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.